This is Doug Burks, and he is the primary Security Onion developer. And if you don't know, he will tell you what Security Onion is. It's, it's pretty cool. So I'll let Doug go ahead and start. OK, green light. Everybody hear me OK? Excellent. Well, as Seth said, I am Doug Burks, and I'm very excited to be here today. I'm very excited about Bro, very excited about Bro 2.1. I'm very excited about this Bro Exchange about hearing all the very cool talks. Uh, but before I get to hear all the really cool talks, you have to sit through my boring talk. This is not like high speed, like really cool, cutting edge bro stuff. This is just like, how can we get bro out into the community to folks who may not have Linux or BSD experience, folks who may just be a Windows admin, but they need more intelligence about their network, and they just need to be able to click next, next, finish to get bro onto their network. So a little bit about me. Uh, I'm a Christian, first and foremost. So if anybody wants to uh, get together and talk theology, that'd be awesome. Uh, I'm a husband and father. I've got a beautiful wife and two adorable little girls. As a matter of fact, Savannah, her first day of kindergarten was today. So I'm missing that to be here with you guys. You should feel privileged, right? <laughs> OK, so um, I'm also a SANS GSE and community instructor. I teach a few classes for SANS here and there. I'm the Deputy Chief Security Officer for Mandiant. My boss, Richard Baitlick, is here. He's the Chief Security Officer. We're a two-man team, and uh, it's a great company to work for. We're hiring, if you're interested. Uh, we have all kinds of really cool jobs doing intrusion detection, uh, forensics, all kinds of really cool stuff. So if you're interested, please see me or Richard sometime uh, during the conference. You can find me on Twitter at Doug Burks, and if you'd like to live tweet this event, you can use hashtag SecurityOnion. So that's a little bit about me. So let's talk about Security Onion. So I mentioned before that you know one of the goals of Security Onion is we've got all this really cool free and open source security software. Most of it is Linux BSD centric, right? So what happens if you're a Windows shop, if you're a Windows organization, you don't have any Linux experience, but you really need some intelligence about your network. You need to be looking at your internet connections just like everybody else, right? So what I'm going to demonstrate here is that Security Onion does allow you to take a Windows admin off the street, and he can click Next, Next, Finish, and get Bro and all kinds of other cool stuff on his network. So we make it Next, Next, Finish. We have a nice little setup wizard, just like you would see on Windows. You answer a few easy questions, and at the end, you get Bro. You get Snort or Suricata, you get Squeal, you get Elsa, which is a nice web-based front end for logs. It's kind of like Splunk. You get Snorby and a whole lot more. So uh, I'm not going to actually show you Snorby in the demo, but I I'm just going to mention it very quickly. So Snorby is a nice Web 2.0, Ajax, Ruby on Rails. It's got all the cool hipster buzzwords that makes every cool technology righteous, right? Uh, so that's very cool. It's included. It just works right out of the box of Security Onion. Uh, we also have Squirt, which is another web-based interface for looking at your IDS alerts, for looking at uh, things like session data, things like that. You can also do, if you see the map on the right there, you can do GOIP lookups, things like that. So that's kind of cool. Uh, but we're really here to talk about Bro, and I'm really here to do a demo, right? So. I put this caution sign up there because what I'm going to show you is the brand new version of Security Onion making its world debut. It's never before been seen in public. Okay, but since this is brand new, it's likely to fail. So I'm just putting that out there. Okay, so here we go. So Security Onion is based on Ubuntu. And so anybody who's installed Ubuntu, which I imagine everybody in this room probably has at some point in time, you know that installing Ubuntu is actually simpler than installing Windows, right? It's very simple. It's very easy. It's very quick. You can do the Ubuntu installer in five minutes flat, OK? So you do that. You reboot. And you're in your Security Onion uh, environment. And so now you have a setup wizard, right? So let's double click that. And remember, put your Windows admin hat on, right? You guys, I know you're all high-speed BSD Nazis, uh, but just pretend that you're not for a minute, 
and put your Windows hat on and see, could I, could I do this? Could I click through this without any previous experience? Okay, so welcome to Security Onion Setup. This program will allow you to configure Security Onion. Would you like to continue? Why, yes, I would. Okay, so two options here. You can either do quick setup, so if you just want to do a quick evaluation of the technology and see what it looks like, you can do that. It's only going to ask you a couple of very simple questions, and it does everything else for you. Advanced setup allows you a little bit more control over the processes that run on the box, but you have to know a little bit more about those processes in order to be able to do that. So for now, we're going to start with a quick setup. All right, so what would you like your username to be? So I'll be very creative and use Doug. What is your email address? Okay, again, these are not like high IQ questions. All right, hopefully anybody can answer this kind of stuff. What would you like to set your password to? Confirm your password. Would you like to enable ELSA? Okay, so ELSA is the web-based interface for logs, kind of like Splunk. Yes, we do on ELSA. Okay, so we're done. It's asked us all the questions. It's gathered all the information it needs. At this point in time, it's ready to configure everything behind the scenes. So here's what it's going to do. It's going to set the OS time zone to UTC. It's going to delete any existing data or configuration. It's going to create a squeal server. It's going to create a squeal user, create a Snorby user. It's going to configure Snort and Bro to monitor Ethernet Zero. Um, it's going to configure ELSA as both a log node and a web node. So it's going to do all this stuff behind the scenes. Yes, proceed with the changes. So we didn't have to do anything as far as downloading tarballs, compiling software, editing text files, nothing. We don't have internet access, so we can't download rules. That's no big deal. We're initializing the Snorby database. And as I said, I'm not going to actually show that to you, but it is pretty cool stuff. So I encourage you to download Security Onion. Try it out. It's pretty slick. This will take just a few seconds longer. And then we'll be able to log into Squeal. Configuring Elsa. We're just about done. All right, Security Onion setup is now complete. You may view IDS alerts using Squeal, Squirt, or Snorby. Bro logs can be found in NSM Bro and in ELSA if enabled. OK, so excellent. We're done, right? So you figure five minutes for the Ubuntu installer. What did that take? Another five minutes for the setup wizard? 10 minutes, we've installed and configured Bro, Snort, Squeal, Snorby, Squirt. The list goes on and on. All of it's done for you, OK? So now let's prove that this stuff is actually working. So let's log into Squeal. So how many folks are familiar with Squeal? OK, good number of people. Excellent. So I'm going to log in here. And notice that I have, these are my sensors that have been automatically set up for me. This box is called BDR Demo 1. So I've got a, an IDS sensor for Ethernet 0. And I've got an OSEC sensor for host-based intrusion detection system alerts. I'm going to select all and start squeal. Now, I don't actually have snort running in this VM, so I don't have any alerts that are going on here. And I don't have any network traffic anyway. Uh, so let me quickly show you. If I go to NSM bro logs, can you guys see that, or do I need to make the font bigger? Good? All right, so if I go to current, so bro is running. So what I want to do is I want to create some traffic. So I'm going to replace some PCAPs. We'll just do all of them. All right, so I just downloaded a bunch of PCAPs from openpacket.org. Uh, open and we're going to replay those. So Bro is running. It's capturing all that intelligence from those PCAPs. And it's going to be writing them to the file system. And of course, at the same time, those Bro logs are going into ELSA. And as I'll show you in a minute, the bro HTTP log is going into squeal. So we should be able to see some of those by now. So if I do an advanced query, and let me just take this out. All 
All right, so notice here, I've got these URL events. These are from the bro HTTP log, okay? So imagine if we were on our real-time events tab and we had some snort IDS alerts, right? So maybe we saw like black hole exploit kit, right? So maybe we'd look at the IP address on that IDS alert and figure out, okay, what was the context around this black hole exploit kit? So maybe we'd search for that IP address and we'd then be able to see some of these URL events. So we'd actually see the sequence of events. So Bro is giving us, uh, showing us that the user went to Google and they typed in a query and that took them to this page and that page had an ad banner which was hosted in Russia and then that site got compromised and began exploiting uh, workstations with Black Hole Exploit Kit. So we immediately see the, the advantage here of having Bro and having that additional intelligence of that HTTP logging. So the other cool thing that we can do, is since we have these HTTP logs in Squeal, Squeal has full packet capture, right? So I can instantly pivot from an IDS alert or from a piece of session, session data or a transaction log like this HTTP log, pivot from that to full packet capture just by right-clicking on the alert ID. Right, so if I look at this URL and I say, hmm, that looks interesting, especially given the URI down here, that looks kind of funky, so maybe I want to investigate that. So I go to my full packet capture, and I pull back an ASCII transcript, and I see, okay, Workstation did a get for this PHP page, but what was actually returned was, what's that? This program cannot be run in DOS mode. Interesting. Hmm. Okay, so since I have access to full packet capture, the next thing I can do is I could also pull it into Wireshark. And, you know, Wireshark has this cool capability where you can go file exports objects HTTP, and then you can actually pull the file right out of the PCAP. Well, that's pretty slick. Uh, another brand new feature that I just added to the Squeal client like two weeks ago is in addition to sending the PCAP to Wireshark, I can also send it to Network Miner. Okay, so Network Miner has the same capability. It can pull, it can extract files right out of uh, protocol streams. And so there we see, yep, it extracted the file and I can open the folder and I'll actually have what we know is an exe file, right, in my folder. So that's pretty slick. Let me show you one other thing that's cool about this network miner integration. Let's see, Irish Times, this is kind of interesting. So let's send this into network miner. Okay, so user goes to this website and we say, oh, that's interesting. So let's pull the full entire conversation into Network Miner. And in addition to pulling the files like we showed in the last example, it's also pulling the images out. So you can actually see all of the JPEGs, GIFs, and PNGs right out of the conversation. That's pretty slick, right? All right. So that's Squeal. Squeal can do a lot of cool stuff. Uh, the only thing, as I mentioned before, the only uh, Bro integration in Squeal that we have right now is the Bro HTTP logs. Um, I'm looking to do more of that kind of stuff in the future. Uh, but let me show you, let me get back on my notes here and make it sure that I'm staying on track. Seth, how am I doing on time? Okay, excellent. Excellent. Uh, so, one of the things that uh, I've always told people uh, as far as defending your network, you know, you have to know your network. And so Bro helps you to know your network. One of the things that I tell people is, hey, look at the user agents that you see on your network. You might find something interesting, right? Uh, and you guys know this. I don't have to tell you this. Uh, but so what we've done traditionally with, with the standard bro ASCII logs in the file system is, you know, we run zcat and then we pipe it into bro cut and then we use our standard Unix-based command line kung fu, 
right? But what if you're a Windows admin and this is just Greek to you, right? So that's where things like ELSA come into play. So instead of having to drop to a command line and having to bash your way to these answers, well, what if you could just log into a web interface, say, hey, show me all the user agents on my network? Well, that'd be pretty cool, right? Let's see if we can do it. So I'm going to go log into ELSA. Hopefully. All right, I'm going to use my same username and password that I created in the setup wizard. All right, so I'm logged into Elsa. So Elsa has all of our bro logs uh, in a MySQL database. It's all indexed, so it's very fast. So let's say I want to go look at bro HTTP. So basically, show me everything in the bro HTTP log. OK, so instantly, I now have all of my bro HTTP logs. I'm not in a command line. By the way, this, all of this ELSA integration work was done by Scott Runnels. Uh, so Scott did an amazing job on getting all that stuff integrated. So thank you, Scott. Uh, so any of these fields that you see here that are interesting, you can click on those. Uh, but getting back to our example of the user agent, so I can just click on user agent, and instantly right, I, I see a summarized view of every single user agent that Bro has seen on my network. That's pretty slick, right? Right, so you know, on my slide I show Bob's evil clown CNC agent. Right, so this makes it very trivial for anybody to be able to log into a, an easy to use web based interface, do a couple of clicks, and have all of this intelligence about their network. And of course, you can do all kinds of other cool stuff. You can, if you see an IP address that interests you, you can drill into that. And you can see just the uh, HTTP logs for that particular IP address. So all kinds of cool stuff there. So that's ELSA. Um, and what we've done so far is really just one box, right? And so that's great if, you're, if you only have one link to monitor. But what if you have, what if you're an organization that has multiple links to monitor? You know, probably that's the case, right? So what would be really nice is if you had multiple sensors, you know, one sensor monitoring each individual network link and being able to query all those at the same exact time. That'd be pretty nice, right? So let's do that. So let's go to my second virtual machine and I'm going to run through the setup wizard just like I did before. But this time, instead of doing quick setup, I'm going to choose advanced setup. Okay, this gives me a little bit more control and this allows me to say, I only want a sensor. Because I've already got my server, right? That's what I set up first. I really only need a sensor. So what's the host name or IP address? What's a username that can log into the box? Which IDS engine do you want to use? Which interface do you want to monitor? Do you want to enable ELSA? Why, yes, I do. All right, and so Scott, this is something that I added that I haven't told you about. So instead of having to manually go to the server and run that command, uh, so the setup wizard will do that for you if you allow it to. So basically, behind the scenes, uh, the ELSA server has to know about the, the ELSA node that we're setting up. And in order to do that, we have to restart Apache. And so that could be a disruptive uh, service. So we didn't want to do that automatically, but we make it an option there. So yes, update the ELSA server so everything's just automatic. And yes, proceed with the changes. So again, another couple of minutes, it's going to configure everything on the box. It's going to log into the server with the username that I gave it. Do a little configuration on the server side. And we're 
almost done. And there we go. Everything is finished. All right, so let's just go and verify that this new server, is, this new sensor is up and running and reporting in the way it should. I'm going to log into my Squeal server. So notice here that whereas before I just had demo one, I now have demo two as well. So I'm going to select all, start Squeal. I'm going to go to my terminal and I'm going to replay some PCAPs again, just so we have some traffic on the second sensor. Okay, so while those are processing, I'll flip back over here. And again, I'll do the same search so that we can see the bro HTTP logs coming into Squeal. So now if I expand the sensor column and scroll all the way down, I should see demo two reporting in. So instantly within a couple of minutes, uh, again, we've configured Bro. We've configured it to send all of its logs, all of its HTTP logs into Squeal. And all that stuff is working perfectly. That's awesome. Uh, so we verified that. So now let's just go and we're going to go to our NSM Bro logs current. Look at our HTTP logs. So, uh, I want to make sure that you guys don't think I'm trying to pull something over on you, right? Because I've got two virtual machines and they're sharing a network interface. So you could say, well, it's really just the first virtual machine that's capturing the traffic, right? So since I'm on my second virtual machine, I'm going to grab this unique identifier so that hopefully when we log into ELSA and search for that identifier, It'll show up, and that'll prove that, yes, those bro logs, all of the bro logs from the second sensor are being uh, searched by the central ELSA web interface. Oops. All right, so let's see if this works. Not yet. Fail. Sometimes it takes a few seconds. There it goes. All right. So our unique identifier, thank you very much. Scott, your fruit basket is in the mail. <laughs> so there you go. Uh, we spent, what, 45 minutes. We configured two boxes. Uh, they are fully up and running using Squeal, using traditional IDS alerts, using Bro 2.1. Uh, all reporting into central interfaces. That's pretty cool. So now let's talk about the state of Security Onion and uh, if you guys want to play with it. So if you go to my website right now and download the current Security Onion ISO image, you're going to get the old and busted version. Okay, I said before that the version that I'm showing you today is the brand new version uh, because Scott and I are currently working on this new version, uh, hopefully to release the final in the next month or so. Um, so let me talk about that. I'm calling that BDR, the Big Distro Rebuild. So what we're doing, uh, the, the current version of Security Onion is basically just an ISO image and just kind of my own little rigged up shell script to do updates. In this new version, we're putting everything in, a, in an Ubuntu Launchpad PPA. So all of our packages are there. So you can take whatever Ubuntu flavor you want and that could be Ubuntu server, just a minimal installation, at our PPA, at our packages. And you can do all this stuff with whatever flavor of Ubuntu you want. When we do build an ISO image, it'll be based on Zubuntu, the XFCE flavor of Ubuntu. It'll be 64-bit. It'll be 12.04, so it's all the new hotness. Um, it's going to have Bro 2.1, so whenever Bro 2.1 final comes out, we're going to wait for that before we spin our final ISO image. Um, because Bro 2.1 has this awesome new PF ring cluster magic built into it that I'm very excited about, we're hoping to include PF ring 
in our PPA so that you can just insert that uh, PF ring module and everything just works. That'd be pretty slick. So you can go to the site, securityonion.blogspot.com. If you want to play with this BDR version, you can join our Security Onion testing mailing list. So uh, if you follow the team members link, you'll see that we have a testing team and a testing mailing list. So just join that mailing list. And uh, as we put out updates, we'll ask for people to test that. And so you can be playing with all the new hotness. And we need all the testing that we can get. We want to make sure that this is a, a solid release that people can deploy on their networks and, and it just work. Uh, so uh, I think I'm just about out of time. Uh, are there any questions? <laughs>